fun. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. And a Happy New Year. Hello, precious ones. Welcome to Kiss Time with Jesus, brought to you by COPUSA. I am your host, Nina AJ. We want to wish all of you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We want to wish our national head, Apostle Ajimana Mwaku, um, a happy, happy, happy Merry Christmas to you. Our children's ministry on national level, um, Pastor Prempe, Frank Prempe, Ajima Prempe, we want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish all kids that with Jesus, our frequent children that are always here, um, the Morgan family, the Ampofu family, the Ofori family, the Minka, Pia Minka family, and my own family. We want to wish all their parents and the, those families, we want to wish you a Merry Christmas. How can we forget our own um um, sir, um, 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 Pastor Morgan, Pastor Morgan, Pastor Morgan has been a strong backbone of our program, COP, um, Children's Ministry, uh, Kiss Time with Jesus. How can we forget you, Daddy? We love you so much for your support. And also, how can we forget Uncle Sam, Uncle Sam, uh, how can we forget you, Kiss Time with Jesus? brought to you by COP. We appreciate all of you. Merry Christmas to you and your family. And how can I also forget my own committee members, um, Dickness, Linda Dickness, uh, Amelia Dickness, um, Golda, and our own Elder James. How can we forget all of you? We love you for your support. Uh, it has been a great year and glory be unto God. We love you. Merry Christmas to you and your family. And all children and all teachers within the nation, COP USA, we wish all children and we wish all our teachers within the nation, COP USA, we wish all of you a merry Christmas. We also wish our first lady, National Head's wife, Mrs. Sheila Ajmana Mwako, and all our first ladies within the nation. We love you. We love you. Merry Christmas to you. Precious ones, Merry Christmas. I know Santa has visited some of you, and those that were good, you got a lot of presents. Those that were not that good will try hard um, next year. But precious ones, Christmas is not all about Santa and toys. Christmas is about the gift that God gave to us. And that is Jesus, his only son. And the whole month of December, we've been celebrating, we've been talking about this wonderful gift that God gave unto us and is still with us, the son of God, Jesus Christ. He's been born. Christ is born. Christ is born. And that's what we'll be talking about today. But today, our lesson will be, the focus will be about the dream, the dream that Joseph had, the dream that Joseph had. Before we do that, I have precious ones that I hear are always here with me. They are going to introduce themselves and then we'll go on and, and learn our memory first. So the first person can start. Hello, my name is Esther Morgan and I'm from Patterson District. Hello, my name is Joel Morgan, and I am from Patterson District. Hello, my name is James Ose Ampovo, and I'm coming from PIWC New York District. Hi, my name is Declan Afford from Cleveland District. Hi, my name is Darren Afford from Cleveland District. Hello, my name is Janelle Piaraminka from Greater Grace Dallas District. Hello, my name is Shawnee Piaraminka, and I am also from Dallas District. You are all welcome, precious ones, and you are also welcome, precious ones at home. What comes to Kiss Time with Jesus one more time? We are going to learn a lot and also learn about, um, about the birth of Christ. Our memory verse today will be taken from Colossians chapter 3, verse 12. Colossians chapter 3, verse 12. And I'm reading from the NIV version. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, Clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, 
gentleness, and patience. Amen. 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 So precious ones at home, we want you to practice your memory verse. Practice your memory verse and share it with a loved one. Our topic for today, our topic for today is Joseph's dream. Joseph's dream. Last week, we talked about what, when the angel visited um, Zechariah, right? And today, we are here to talk about Joseph's dream. And our scripture reading will be taken from Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 to 24. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 to 24. Miss Esther, can you read for us? Yes. I'm reading from Matthew 1, verse 18 through 24. Before Jesus was born, there was a righteous man who was a descendant of King David. His name was Joseph. He was engaged to Mary, a young woman who was also a virgin. In those ancient times, when someone was engaged, it was almost like they were married, except they did not live in the same house. The engagement was a serious commitment compared to today's practices. In fact, the only way to break it off was to get a divorce. Joseph loved Mary very much, but when he found out she was already pregnant, he was very disappointed. But being a reasonable and decent person, he decided not to get mad or let anyone know what was going on. If he told anyone, Mary would be in really big trouble. So instead, Joseph quietly planned a divorce. Let's see what happens next. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen and amen and amen. So Miss Esther, you read Matthew chapter 1, 18 to 24? Yes, I did. Okay. God richly bless you. God richly bless you. Precious ones. There are a few questions that I want us to go over and then we'll open the floor for discussion, okay? So per what Esther read, Miss Esther read to us, what happened after Joseph planned to divorce Mary? What happened? After Joseph had planned to divorce Mary, what happened? Yes, Miss Esther. So Joseph decided to break his engagement quietly because he found out um, that Mary was pregnant and didn't want like Mary to be shamed because like if you were found like pregnant without being married, then you would be in big trouble. Amen. 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 God bless you. Who also want to try? Yes, um, James. I, also wanted to build, I wanted to build up on what um, Esther said. You got to okay. take a look um, at the context of like where they were at that time, which was like Jerusalem and Israel back then. They took purity very seriously. Like if they're even in general, like today, if there was like a king or something and he had a daughter and her purity was like compromised, and that's how wars were started. So when Joseph found out that the person he was going to be engaged to, who was supposed to be a virgin, was already pregnant, that was a huge problem because for you to be married, the father had to like show something that was proving for you to be a virgin. And then here you are already pregnant with a baby that supposedly came from the Holy Ghost. So if I was Joseph, I could definitely like relate to how he was feeling at that time, because definitely it'd be a huge shock because like he was busy doing his job and all he sees is his wife's pregnant with a baby. So he would want to divorce. But like Esther said, he was a very kind person, very gentle, nice guy. And he did so quietly. He didn't want to disgrace Mary. So yeah, that, that was, I just wanted to build up on, on what Esther said a little bit. God bless you. God bless you for your contribution. Why did the angel visit, uh, why did the angel visit Joseph? Remember, this question is building on what Esther and James have already talked about, right? Why do you think the angel of the Lord visited Joseph? Yes, Declan. Um, to, the angel of the Lord visited Joseph to tell him that 
it that he would not he should not be afraid for it is for it is okay to have Mary as a wife. Wow. This 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 question I was just sitting down. God bless you, Declan. A great, great answer. God bless you. I see people's hands are up. So well, let's look at um let's let me call Darren and then Esther. Darren then Esther, and I'll come in. I think that the reason why the angel visited Joseph was because if the if Joseph had ended up divorcing Mary, not only would Mary be an only mother, because getting divorced, it won't really speak too good about you, which would make it a little bit harder for it to get married again or to get engaged again. But it would also mean that you, um, Jesus wouldn't have had like a biological father at all. Because if um, not like a biological, Jesus wouldn't have had like a parent, a, a man parent. Also, a mom and a dad. Mm -hmm, yes. Yeah. Okay. Once that went spiritual. Okay. Yeah, God bless it. you. God bless you. Great contribution. Yes, Miss Esther. And then we come to James. Oh, oh. Joe, is your hand up too? No. no oh, okay. So the reason why the for, so first of all the angel was actually God's angel. So the reason why the angel came was to tell um Joseph not to be afraid and that it was fine to keep Mary as his wife and that he shouldn't be afraid for what was going to come for him and Mary. God bless then, you for for yeah, God bless you for the contribution. Yes, Miss um Prophet James. Uh, I wanted to say that the angel came to Joseph uh, as a form of God's assurance, because mind you, angels were messengers of God. They didn't just wake up one morning and decide to go and tell Joseph that you're going to have a wife and, you know, and like all the stuff that the angel told Joseph. They had to have been told by God to tell him. So in actual fact, it was more of God's assurance because the angels were the messengers. And like Darren, um, Darren said, it would kind of go against the prophecy because if Joseph wants to divorce uh, Mary, then that might have brought a whole other set of problems. But in this context, though, what we also have to see is that there was a prophecy that there'd be a virgin and she would conceive and bear a son. So really, whether the angel came or didn't come, what I really think is that God would have found a way to still make sure that Joseph and Mary were kept together because after all, it was his prophecy that he wanted to be fulfilled. So the angel was there to, like Darren said, help to like not make Joseph afraid and that it was okay for Mary to be his wife. Amen. Amen. Yes, Darren. Thank you, James. God bless you. Just forget another reason and what I wanted to say last time I forgot actually. First of all was that and the baby was supposed to be born in Bethlehem. So that limited the amount of like people because the sensor, you had to go to where you actually born, where your dad was born. Well, that was from, that was from Jesus's point of view. You had to go there. And then when when you when you went there, that was for, for Joseph, that was Bethlehem. So that also limited God's choice of people because of the prophecy it had before. And then there was also the fact that the person had to also be holy. You see, when you realize that Joseph was planning to divorce Mary quietly, not get her killed or stoned or sinned or anything like that, that alone can tell you that he is a good person at heart. Mm. So, so it also limited God's choice to very, very few people because there are very few people who are actually like Christian, Christian, Christian. Right now, me, Declan, and some, most of us, we are all trying to become as good as Jesus. But mm -hmm. right now, we are nowhere there. Amen. God bless you. Great contribution. Um, um, Declan and then James. Just to add to what Dora said, the person also had to be a virgin because in the prof because of the prof because of the prophecy from the prophet, uh, prophets. prophets from prophets. God bless you. God bless you, Declan. Yes, uh, Prophet James. That, that's what I was going to say, but then Declan beat me to it again. What I was going to say was that the requirement was that it had to be a virgin. And for a minute, let's take a look there, because 
when the angel came to Mary, he said, blessed are you highly favored one. Like, hold on. When he came to, um, the, the angel came to her, he, he said in Luke chapter one, verse 28, rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. Mm. So really, that means God had a choice. All the women had to be was a virgin and pure, meaning that like God had a choice of all the women in the world who were virgins at the time. But he chose Mary. And that was an exhibition of God's um, favor, because if you look at the genealogy of Christ, right, it it stretches all the way to Abraham. And if we're going to talk about prophecy, that meant that God knew that when Abraham was making his covenant with Abraham, 490 years later, that's when he would bring in Jesus, because the gap between the two was 14 generations. So that's 490 years, meaning he knew that Jesus would be born and his mother had to be a virgin and everything, meaning that God had already calculated what would happen before it even happened. And that shows a lot about his omniscience and also showed about why he favored Mary. So I also wanted to bring that out there. God richly bless all of you. Great contributions. These proves that you really understand the contribution actually shows you understand the lesson. God bless all of you. Why was the virgin? I think we've talked that. I pretty much have answered the question. There's, I don't have to even hit that. The next question, James just answered that. So we'll go to the next one. What did Joseph do after he woke up from his dream? Remember, the angel of the Lord appeared unto Joseph in his dream. Now, when he woke up, what did he do? Yes, Joel. He did exactly as God commanded him. What did he command him to do? To marry um, Mary and not to be afraid. Not to be afraid. Go ahead and take Mary as your wife. Obedience. Here, if they are stressing on obedience, right? Go told him to do something. He woke up from his dream. He did exactly what God told him to do. God richly bless you. Who has a different answer from what Joel said? Yes, um, Daryl. I won't exactly say different, but yeah, I agree definitely with what Joel said. And I also wanted to, I'm also saying that another reason why Joseph would, would have like made the target was that after he heard all of this, look at how quickly. Rabbi doesn't say that shortly after he says, immediately he went and got married to me. That means that he was, my dad would say, he, no, Charles of Lassie. He was trying to take his time. He was taking his time saying, okay, that shows the, just the amount of caution. So when the angel began by saying, do not be afraid, he knew what, who he was talking to. Because it looks like this episode, well, he was a very cautious man. And I mean, it's a scary thing too, right? It's scary. He was a righteous man. The Bible describes him as a righteous person, right? And guess what? A righteous person and people should hear that, oh, the lady that uh, he's even going to marry, he got, got him pregnant before. He, I, I mean, he was, there was, I'm sure there was so much that was going through Joseph's, Joseph's mind. If we relate it to our own lives today, right? Just imagine that you, you, you're going to do something or there is something that let's say you're going to take a test, right? They relate to this to like you going to take a test in school and how an American system, um, um, how, how, do they, how do you call it? Um, they say taking your honor code, right? Honor code is very, very, very important. And you feel like somebody has gone to do something or your test, you've got all right, but they feel like maybe you cheated or something. And then the angel of the Lord, so here you feel like you're in trouble. And the angel of the Lord tells you that, do not be afraid. When you wake up in the morning, go to your teacher and tell your teacher that, hey, look, I didn't do this. And you may want, if you want me to retake it, or if you want me to prove why I got 100%, I can do that. Can you? Yes, you can. Why? Because you know you didn't cheat, right? You did your best, and that's why you had that higher mark. Here, they, uh, Joseph was, was troubled. He didn't know what to do. So the angel of the Lord appearing to him, 
and telling him what to do, he acted on it, right? He trusted, he had faith and he acted on it. Yes, who hand was up? Was it Esther or Joel? Yes, yeah, yes, Joel. And um, they chose, um, God chose Joseph because he was a righteous man. Every time in the Bible, whenever you read it, in some, in some parts, it talks about how that person was good and righteous and always obey God. And, um, and, and it shows that God always has a plan for someone who follows him and always obeys him. God bless you. God bless you, Joa. God richly bless you. Um, who else? I saw somebody else hand up. Oh, okay. So then we'll go. We'll go ahead with the next question. God Wait, richly bless I, Auntie, you. I was going to say something. Yeah, you can go ahead. So I was going to say the reason why uh, God chose Joseph was because he was also uh, a descendant of David, right? If you look at the conversation that God and David had on David, he said that he would make sure that his throne goes on forever. And he was mm -hmm. added to like a dynasty of kings and everything. So if you look at all the generations later, when um Joseph was born that was to fulfill God's promise that he made to David at that time because Joseph was his descendant and this also kind of ties into like the favor with Mary thing is because I'm pretty sure King David must have had lots of descendants because take a look at Solomon who was his son right he had about 700 wives so that means God had more than enough descendants to choose from but here he chose um, Joseph. So we can see the story of favor playing a lot in the birth of Jesus Christ. Um, yeah, in his birth, we, yeah, like I was saying, you can see a lot about the favor of God because even though they met the requirements, there were a lot of people who met that requirement. And that's why my own, my mom always tells me that I always pray for grace and favor because you don't you see the person next to you, you might be better than them, but if God favors them over a year, it won't mm -hmm. matter about your qualifications. So that that's also one thing I wanted to throw out there. God bless you, James. That was a great contribution. That is really, really a good one. Praying for grace and mercies from God. There are people that they don't have to work hard to earn something. There are people that when they mention their name, they are not there, right? They mention their name somewhere in the favor of God, go before even their names. Then when their names are mentioned, people begin to, to, to give them things, do good things for them, even without their presence. And you ask yourself, why is it that when this person do this, it doesn't take that person hard work or he doesn't go through a lot and she doesn't do this a lot and then she gets that or he gets that. It's because the favor of God is upon their life. The grace, the cloud of glory, they are swimming in it, right? So we need to always pray for the, as James is saying, her mom or his mom always tells him. We always, precious us, we need to always pray for the, for, for the glory of God for, to be, to dawn upon our lives all the time, for us to swim in his favor and grace. Yes, um, Joel, is your hand up? No, yeah. Whose hand was up? Yes, Miss Esther. Uh, are we on the next question? Because I wanted to answer that. Yeah, you can go ahead. Okay. So um, so you would feel strong and God will help us understand his plan, his plan for us. So, like just as he sent um an angel to Joseph to make sure that, um <coughs> to help him and assure him that everything would be all right, and then and that um Mary and him would be fine in the end. Yeah, yeah. God richly bless you. God richly bless you, Miss Esther. Now, my next question. If somebody's hand is up. Oh, okay. So my next question is, if you are troubled, now we are coming to the discussion part. If let's say you are troubled or you are worried about something, like what happened to Joseph about Mary, right? What? will happen if our heart is right with God? What will happen? Yes. Darren. 
think that there are like multiple things or steps that first to happen. And I think the first thing is that, well, depending on what you choose, the first thing all relies on you. And that, in fact, that will determine the entire phase because you can decide that you are troubled and you decide, if you decide not to rely on God, uh, well, you shouldn't be expecting to get out of those trouble very soon. But if you decide to rely on God, uh, it may take a while, but God will surely listen. He will give you an answer. You may not realize, but he will give you an answer. And then the answer, the answer he will give you, and it can come into the form of an angel, vision, a person coming, prophesying, or anything like that. But when God does that, uh, the, what everything, uh, when our hearts are right with God, what happens is that God finds a way to intercede for us. Because if our hearts mm. are right with God, that means that we also we always pray in everything. We are making sure that we commit as little sin as possible. And everything we do is basically holy. That, that is extremely hard to do in the first place. So if you can do that, uh, then we just leave the rest to God. My dad always says that when you are tired or in trouble or anything like that, don't bother doing anything. Just, just relax. Mm-hmm. Relax. Because God will take care of everything else. Relax and God will take care of everything else. If your heart is with right, is, is right with God. Yes, Joel. And then we come to James. If we are all righteous, then then maybe, maybe like um, you know how before Adam and Eve, before they did something bad, the world was peaceful, there was no sin. Mm-hmm. Maybe if, if that happened again, maybe sin might be like erased from the world. Jesus would come and um and, and will do more wondrous things in life. God bless you. God bless you, Joel. Great answer. God richly bless you. Yes, James. Janelle, is your hand up? Yeah. Uh, no. Okay. After James, you go. Okay. Okay, I also wanted to say that um, when you are right with God and you're troubled or something, he will reveal his purpose for you and he'll grant you peace because, actually, no, he'll reveal his purpose for you. He'll grant you peace, but you should still go to God in prayer because like Philippians chapter four, verse six, it says like, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, but by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. So like, if you're going through something, you should always pray and trust in God because the scripture said that trust in the Lord and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. So if you go as a Christian, you go to God in prayer and you do all that, he will resolve all your situations, but only if you're staying right with him. And even if you're, you're staying right with him, there are other things that God can do for you. Like, like my, my mom in that prayer telling me always to pray for favor. If you're a person who doesn't stand right with God, you might not even get that favor. And the problem is, if you don't go right with God, that's a problem too, because my dad was preaching today and he was saying something very interesting that the devil was already mad at us for our treachery because instead of joining him in his evil, we went to go to the side of God. But if we sin and we come back to the devil's side and mind you, he hasn't forgiven us for going back to God in the first place. So when we said a comeback, what do you think? What, what do you think the devil's going to want to do to you? Mm. So even when you do something bad, you should always try and stick to the side of God, because that is where all the protection and that is where God's like providence and everything that uh, is offered to a Christian. Once you're aligned with God, that is when you'll get all those extra perks. So I also wanted to throw that out there. God bless you, James. When you're on Jesus' side, that's where all the good stuff are, right? There's a Sunday school song I love so much. When Jesus in the family, happy, happy home. Happy, happy home. Happy, happy home. Happy, happy home. When Jesus is in family, Happy, 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 happ
God's Jesus side. Jesus' side. Jesus' side. Jesus' side. Forever. God's side. God's side. God bless all of us. And that is why we need to choose and choose wisely. Right? Don't try to go to Jesus and go to Satan at the same time. Let's try to be on the good side. If we've been good side, that's where all the good stuff happens. Okay? God bless you for that. God bless you, James. I love that. Yes, Darren. Oh, you Janelle. Sorry, hold on. Janelle, okay. you can go next. Oh, you also want to go? Okay, so after Janelle, Sean. Then after Sean, Darren. Okay, so what um what I thought about this is that um when if your heart is with God, then when you're like when you don't know what to do, then God can like tell you that like like Joseph, he can tell you not to be afraid and give you the answer to the problem. Yeah. Yeah. So what Janelle is saying is that as precious ones, when we go through any problem. We should always believe and trust God and know that God got us. He got your back. So do not be afraid for he is with you. Jidal, God bless you. Yes, Sean. Um, I, th I think that um, whenever you're... Um, how do I say it? Say it anyhow, son. Okay. Turn it down. I think that when um you're afraid or um when you need help, I think the best thing to do is just to go pray to God and um you know um ask him for help and because like you said, he always got your back. So mm -hmm. God bless you, Sean. Sean is letting us know as precious ones that anytime we find ourselves in trouble, anytime we find ourselves in any difficult situation, we should not try fixing it ourselves. God got our back. Therefore, we should pray. We should go before him with prayer and ask God to help us and God will help you. Just imagine if you need help and you don't ask for it. Do you get it? As human as we are, if you need help and you don't speak it out, how will people figure out you need help, right? So we need to go to God and ask God, God, I can't do this by myself. I need your help. I need your grace. And do you think God will do it? Yes, he will do it for you. God bless you, Sean. Um, we'll go to Joel, Esther, then Dar Darren and Declan. So we start with Joel. Joel, Esther, Darren, Declan. Are we saying what we learned today? No. Um, I saw your hand up. So if you okay, want to cool. wait, you can wait. It's uh, yours. Wait. Okay, Esther, you can go. Um, well, is it okay if I say what I want, though? <laughs> if you want to tell us what you... Okay, tell us. Share with us. And then, Joel, you can go ahead. So I learned to, to always trust in God and listen to what he says and that he's a merciful God and that he loves us and he um, protects us all the time. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Yes, Joel. Um, I learned that when God told you not to be afraid or an angel of God told you not to be afraid, don't be afraid. Even when he asks you to jump off a cliff because something good may happen. Like let's say you, act, like, um, you jump off a cliff and it's like solid ground. But then it turns into like um, something like, yeah, like a bed, something soft mm -hmm. and good, mm -hmm. and you're not injured. And then you'll be grateful because you trust in God. Because you trust in God. We should learn to trust in God. God bless you, Joel. He has Darren. See, what I feel like is that everyone is speaking that if you are troubled or worried about something like this, and we are right with God, everything is awesome. And God, God wants us. But I think that the main part isn't that if our heart is right with God, because I think it's more of like, well, what that the situation is, what the situation is about. Because when you really realize that your heart can be right with God and everything, but then there's a scene, life's not fair. Life's unfair, life's not fair. Your heart can be right with God, but God decides that you wait a little longer. Because look at you. 
Job's heart was right with God, so not much that God boosted. So why did God wait until people died? You see, so all of this, it all depends on what the situation is. Because if God has, let's say God has said that you can, Job's life is in your hands, but not like you can, you can die, just make him feel pain until he bows to you. I'm not sure why God would say that. Anyway, anyway, it all depends <laughs> on the situation because there are certain situations that God meets people and there, are, and there are certain people that aren't better than you. You are just more favored. Hmm. So it all boils down back to favor. It's not really if your heart is right as God. Although if your heart is right with God, it basically wins 90% of the battle. It also depends on the situation. God bless you. Yes, Declan. So I wanted to say that uh, I wanted to answer the question because in James one, in James one, one, in James one two to five to four it says, "My blood from the N R from the N I R D version, New International Version." My brothers and sisters, you will face all kinds of trouble when you mm. do. Think of it as pure joy. Your faith mm. will be tested. You mm. know what to. You know that when this happens, it will produce you strength to continue, and you must allow this strength to finish its work. Then you will. Then you will be all you should be. You will have everything you need. So in this verse, what I understand from it, it's like when you are facing troubles, when you are facing troubles, all you need is to. You know that you are being tested, and um, if you if you are being tested, then put up your faith so that you, then you can then you have the strength to continue. So that's it. Amen. God bless you, Declan. I think Declan, you said something that was I was going to ask. You gave the answer already, and uh, my question was going to I was going to ask that: Do we children even go through difficult times? And if it is yes, how do you deal with those difficulties? If someone want to share with us a difficult or a challenging time of their lives and how um, they dealt with it. Um, I need one or two people to share with us a practical example to strengthen um, 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 our precious ones at home who wanna share with us or who want to relate or know somebody that a child, the question, the first question is that, do children, do we precious ones, do we go through difficult times? Do we, do we go through challenges in life? And then if yes, can someone share with us? Um, we'll start with um, um, James, you haven't spoken, right? Or you want to wait? I'll, I'll you want to go or you want to wait? I, I want to wait a little bit. Yeah. Oh, okay, then. Yes, Janelle, you can go. And then we'll come to um, Esther. Um, I think as kids, we do have challenges in life. And one is like, um, like, let's say like you have school and then there's like this big, big, big project. And then you have to work really, really hard to finish it. And then when you finish it, then you finally find out that it actually paid off. And who made it paid off? Your hard work. Your hard work, we gave you the hard work. We gave you the strength and the energy. God. It was God. So all that we are trying to how this is how I want you to relate to it. This was my difficult time. My difficult time, one of my difficult times was when I was given a big project at school and didn't really know how to kind of go about it. And by through God's grace and me asking God for strength and knowledge and wisdom, I was able to do it, right? So there was a challenge and God helped you overcome that challenge. You didn't stay permanent in that challenge. You came out of that challenge, right? God bless you, Jenna. God richly bless you. Yes, Esther, then Joel, and then Darren. Sean, is your hand up? No, okay. Yes, um, Esther. So I think kids could have some challenges too, like for example, school. Mm -hmm. And like maybe like um, for like um, pastors' kids, maybe moving around and getting and um, getting new friends. 
Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So your challenge, so here, what was your challenge? Here, the challenge was um, you being transferred to another place, right? Esther, Esther, <laughs> I'm trying to understand your question. You being transferred to another place, like school, and then when you went to the school, uh, you making new friends? I'm saying like, for example, like um, homework, like when you have mm -hmm. a lot of homework and you have that pressure, or like uh -huh. when you're like, you move around like kind of a lot and then you don't have much friends or it's hard to make friends for you. Okay, I mean, so here your the difficulty is um, you having a lot of homework or you moving around a lot. So because of that, you don't have like besties all the time, but wherever you go, you need to have new mm -hmm. friends or you having um, a problem or not able to make friends, right? And that was a challenge. Now, what happened after the challenge? Were you, were you able to overcome those challenges? How did you do that? Esther, that's your question. Yeah, so for the homework part, um, I tried to like study a lot. And for the friends part, um, it's kind of easy for me to make friends now. So I'm fine with that one too. You're fine with that one too. So God helped you to overcome your problem, right? God richly bless you. Yes, Joel. Um, one example in the Bible was Samuel when he was younger, when he was sent to the temple um, at a certain age, I forgot. Mm -hmm. I believe around our age, and he had to go there. And he had to stay there for, I think, almost the rest of his life. And he must have been pretty homesick and missed his parents. But um, he was able to listen to God when he called him. And yeah. Fantastic example. Fantastic one. Amazing. God bless you, Joel. Yes. Just imagine you being taken away from your parents. All right? To go live with maybe grandma in Ghana or grandpa in Ghana, right? Or an aunt or an auntie in North Carolina. Mommy bringing you to Auntie Nina here in North Carolina. I'm sure you'd be homesick, right? Right? And then, but while someone was there with Ila, I'm sure he was homesick. But who granted him the grace to keep going? It was the Lord. Because what? The, pl God, the plan that God had for him was to prosper him. There was a road that God was taking him through. So God gave him the strength. God gave him the ability to go through uh, um, that, those moments of his life. Just imagine a baby and grew up without mom and dad, but was with Eli's bad kids and Eli, right? But God saw him through. Fantastic answer. God contribution. God bless you. Yes, we go to Darren, Declan, and then James. Okay, I think I have like two things to say. And the first oh. thing was that for someone, I don't think it was really like the 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 you know beings not being able to see your parents because his parents, he saw them every once a year. That mm -hmm. was like a very hard thing because you see them every every once in a while, then they come. And then after they come, they get you a new dress. You you see that you feel awesome in it. And then they go back every time. I'm sure he must have gotten teary eyed. But I think the main problem was the um, the bullies. I mean, you are this young, and then Eli's sons, priest, two priests. He must have been bullied because Eli's sons, if they're able to take from what is God's already, then the things they are really able to do. Yeah, well, I'm sure that we didn't hear all of it. Uh, because there must have been certain things that they were also doing just to reach that level. So that means that that was probably his main problem, being bullied. They send you, then they intentionally send you, they make you go and do this and then that, especially when you know that you don't want to do it and then you would get in trouble. All of it, I'm sure that was someone's main problem. That must have been really what actually hurt someone because there's no one there to stand up for you also. You're all alone. So for the whole 364 days, or yeah, or your, the highlight of your year, every year would be you seeing your parents, which you weren't even sure if they died because they could be going there. Then this ravenous wolf came and then eats the, the, 
the, the, the person. How do you know that your mom and dad are safe? You'd have to wait till next year and that is if they don't come. So there were a lot of things. So he was constantly worried and constantly on his feet. That is probably why he grew closer to God because if every time yeah, you have to pray for your, the safety of your mother, like every day you wake up, that must have been in the pilot and that say, please God, make sure that uh, the, um, the high priest Eli's sons won't like be very mean to me today or anything at all. So I think that was like the main, his main problem. God bless him. But the good thing is that through it all, God still saw him through. He didn't give up. God granted him the grace to go through. God granted him the strength to go through. God protected his family, right? And that is why, and remember the end of the wicked, the end, what happened to them? What happened to the end of those wicked people? There is always what, that's what uh, James said earlier. We either have to be on good God's side or the word. You have to choose one, but the good stuff happens on God's side, right? But the end of the wicked is always not right. It's death right? And that's what happened to Eli's kids, right? And when someone decided to go with Jesus or God, look at what happened. God used him mightily. God used him to bring message to Eli, the priest. God richly bless you for that great contribution too. Um, Declan, you want to share with us before I call James? We are bringing the lesson to an end. Okay, yes, James. Okay. Oh really? <laughs> okay, you I can go. This wasn't the last, uh, the last comment. So that's no, why. no, Deacon. This isn't the last comment. You have like five minutes. <laughs> so, uh, so what I learned is that when we face troubles and tribulations and persecutions <laughs> and <laughs> police and, and uh, release all the vocabularies. All when we face all of those troubles all kinds of troubles, uh, the Lord will help us if only that we have faith. Amen. Amen. God Amen. bless you. Yes, Prophet James, sum it all up. Yeah. Okay. So I wanted to like kind of like um, piggyback on what Esther said about her two problems, like the homework and being transferred. Me personally, I use the transferring opportunity I used that to brag about it. Like when people, like when I first came to New York and I, I didn't have the New York accent and people were like, oh, where are you from? I'm like, yeah, so my church, I have the biggest church in the world. You see what I'm saying? And there are different branches in every single state of the United States. There's a church. And my dad got transferred from North Carolina all the way to New York because he's that awesome. So like I use that as like a bragging point. I, just, I don't have a problem. When I get transferred somewhere, I'll go and I'll rub it in their faces too. Like my big, big <laughs> church brought me here. So, so yeah, that's what, that's what that's, I was. I was like, that's a way to solve that problem. Mm -hmm. Also, if you want to take a look at a problem, let's take a look at um Joseph, right? He had a lot of problems because look at his own brothers selling him into slavery. Look at him going for, to, to slavery, he getting a job and then his um his boss's wife getting him in trouble. And then he's staying in jail and he helping someone and they're supposed to help him get out of jail, but they forgot about him and he stood in jail for like, I think it was like two or more years so he's really gone through a lot of problems, him being Joseph, but he stayed right with God and he was able to overcome everything. So earlier when we were always saying that if you're aligned right with God and you pray and everything, God will deliver you from your troubles. But it's not like you, it's going to be all like sunshine and roses. You're going to have to go through a lot too. Like D Darren was saying about the Job story, you're going to go through problems and trials and all the fancy Declan vocabulary, but you're going to go through all that. But what God is also going to do is he'll, he'll definitely take you out of those troubles. Um, what I also learned today is that favor is really important because Jacob no, Joseph, uh, I think Mary's wife, Joseph, he had favor. Mary herself had favor. 
And like, there are a lot of people in the genealogy that had favor. And my mom is always pressuring me to pray for favor. And, I, and one day I was like, mom, why do you want me to pray for favor? She's like, that's you, yeah, yeah, I met you after. So like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what like, my mom really always pressures me. So I, I know that favor is very important in our lives. That's also what I learned today. Amen. Amen. That's you, yeah, yeah, I bet yes, yeah. One day when you prosper, you understand why I told you to always pray for favor. I always tell my kids, pray for favor and wisdom because you need wisdom. If you are somebody that lacks wisdom, you are like the foolish man standing by the roadside, right? Because you speak with no wisdom. As precious ones, I always tell my kids that my job is to go to work and bring you money home, right? to provide for you. A kid's job is to go to school and to learn, right? Studying, you have to glue your butt on the chair and learn, right? If you're lazy with it, you, you were not gonna get 100%. If you do it, if you put 50% effort, you get 50% out of it. If you put in all your might, you will get 100% out of that, right? So everything you do, you have to do it with all your might. Whatever thing you find yourself doing, do it and do it well, right? And as you do it, ask for the grace, ask for favor of God. God, help me get this done. God, help me grant me wisdom. There is no difficulty. There's no challenge that you will go in, that you will stay permanent in it. The Bible says that we are going through challenges. We will go through it. It didn't say, Nina, you're going to stay in it. It didn't say, James, you're going to stay in this challenge. It didn't say that, Darren, you're going to stay permanent in this challenge. We will go through them. Why do we go through them? To toughen us, to strengthen us, right? To let us well, give testimony, to testify of his faithfulness upon our lives. Precious ones, we will go through difficulties. We will go through challenges. But when those moments come, don't sit down and say, why me? Why my family? Let us go before the Lord our God, who loves little children, that the son has been given, the son has been born, then the gift has been given unto us. Let us embrace it. Let us enjoy our son. Let us go to him as we celebrate Christmas. A gift has been given unto us. Let us receive that gift and let us share that gift with friends. Let us share the gift with our enemies. Let us share a gift with anybody we come across with and precious ones i tell you what you and i we are on the good side of god we are on the good side of god and when you are with god all things are what possible with god all things are possible the plans he has for you they are not to destroy you they are to prosper you therefore let your height your heart be right with god let us walk in his light. Let everybody around us know that this precious child is unique. This precious person is different. Just last week, I was talking to somebody. Somebody was standing in front of a church and was telling me how Auntie Nina is too much. And you see, when he said that, people were taking it both good way and a bad way. And to him, he just... It was just, he just didn't know how to express that. He said, Auntie Nina is just too much. Yes, I'm too much. Let people have the feel of you, right? Not in a bad way, in a good way. So that when tomorrow you are not there, they will know that this person was here this time. I always miss James in my Sunday school class. When he was little and he was in my district, James will always follow me wherever I go. Sometimes he will help me with snacks. And he was like three years old. He will be pulling my dress and he will be talking and he will be talking because then I had one son. My son is pulling my one side of my dress. James is pulling me one side of my dress and they will follow me wherever I go. Now James is gone right? He has moved on to New York and I'm still here. One day I'll move on somewhere, but one day I will stand somewhere and say, oh, James, I know James. 
Oh, Darren, I know Darren. I know Declan. I know Esther. I know uh, 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 Janelle. I know Sean. I know Joel. I know Darren, right? Why? I would say good things. Why? Because today I am here with you. Merry Christmas to all of you. We appreciate you. When we call on you day and night, you precious ones are there. We record with you. You guys don't rest. We are always on you guys. God richly bless all of you. I pray that God will count his favor, will locate all of you wherever you are, and may his wisdom be upon you all. Merry Christmas to all of you. Have fun, and we will see all of you next week. Until then, 